like tanks. The most difficult class to play and the absolute most difficult class to master. Today I'm going to take you through some steps and lessons that can help you move into the upper echelons of light tank gameplay. Stay alive. A rule that you can apply to every class, yet its potency is truly fruitful in light tanks. These tanks like to flank, adapt, sneak, exploit, ambush. When you spawn in a game of World of Tanks, you are facing 15 or more opponents. As the game progresses, more and more of these opponents will lose health. More and more of them will die. As such, the likelihood of gaps opportunities arising will increase, and if at that point you have lost too much health to safely exploit that, then you have squandered opportunity. So do remember, it is more likely that you will find a game circumstance befitting of a light tank in the final 5 minutes of a game than in the first. So make sure you're sticking around on the battlefield to play and participate in that final 5 minutes. Recognise your alliance on your team. This segue is quite nicely on from our last point, but it is the curse of a light tank. Very rarely does your tank have the innate capability required to carry a game, regardless of the skill with which it's played. And while the plebeians in game chat they rant and rave and blame the light tank for not spotting this, conjecture is really correct. Your status gives you an inherent alliance on your team to manufacture an environment and circumstances in which you can enable their superior assets. It is only ever a mutual arrangement. And this does mean, unfortunately, that there will be some games you play in your light tanks, even more so than in other classes, where that opportunity that you're looking for never arises, where there's nothing you can do to stave off defeat. This does not, however, mean for certain that you played badly. If you didn't see an opportunity, it's quite possible that there wasn't one. Note your camo. Before you enter battle in your light tanks, you should know what your camo lighting is. High tier light tanks are the only class in the game which keep the same concealment while moving that they have while stationary. Knowing this number is crucial knowledge because it allows you a more accurate estimate of when you will and won't be spotted. This estimate will become more refined with time, experience and your specific knowledge of the view range possessed by specific opposing tanks. But you should know your exact camo rating in every single game you play in your light tanks. Also note, certain tanks are able to achieve insanely high consumer ratings. Now, as fun as it is to push an even 90s camo up to 55% and beyond, Beyond about 40 per consumer, you encounter diminishing tactical returns. This is because at about 40% camo rating, you will be concealed in most foliage to a proxy safe level. As in, you won't get spotted until the auto spot at 50 meters. And if you're proxy safe, then adding more concealment does not make you more proxy safe because everything is spotted at 50 meters regardless of its camo. So if your camo is getting much above 48, 40%, at that point it's better to invest in other attributes of the tank such as view range or adding ventilation or investing in the gun. Right? Worth thinking on. Spotting checks. When you plan to leave a position in your light tank, it can be worth firing a shot as you depart. If you know what your camo drops to when you fire, as you should, and which positions have the line of sight on you, whether you do or don't get spotted can tell you a great deal about what had vision on your previous position. In addition, getting spotted on a flank before relocating to the other can have a psychological impact on how people play, as they think that you are elsewhere and play with that in mind. Behind the booty. <laughs> if, I, if, you can't, if I end up shooting you when, when you're in my area, turn the gun around, then that's a, a, 
a meme that uh, I'm I'm ninety percent sure a leopard one won't be able to hit a T ninety two satellite behind it. Ninety percent sure. Alright. Ah Oh for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's gotta be close though, right? <laughs> uh let's see. I'm pinging the absolute right above your turret. Like, uh, look at that. Look at that. It's the it's the little high point of my gun. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, God. <laughs> you were saying? God dang it. I need a smaller damn tank. Once again, I'm 90% sure that a Leopard 1 won't be able to hit an ELC AMX base. Sitting right behind it. No, you know what? 92. 92% sure that you won't be able to hit this shot. Hey! <laughs> I'm smart, yay! The nuances of flanking an opponent are seldom appreciated amidst the overwhelming desire to perforate the booty that you've just discovered. One thing to keep in mind, however, is that a large number of tanks have far less gun depression over the rear than they do anywhere else. For light tanks, it can be viable to stick in this old safe spot. This is especially true when you have a friendly on the other side of the opponent. It's better to stay behind that tank and not flank so that the enemy presents weak spots to both of you instead of presenting his frontal armor to both. Don't be afraid to use HP. Second to RT, light tanks have the lowest hit pool in the game. But hit points are hit points. If a 400 alpha damage shell penetrates you, you'll lose that same health whether you're an E100 or a T1 Cunningham. Right? And while you may have less hit points to spend in a light tank, your hit pool can and should still be thought of as a currency. What can you trade it for? What can you achieve? Sometimes it's viable on city maps to take a shot from an enemy heavy so that your friendly heavy doesn't have to do it. Sometimes just being there, presenting an alternate angle, poking the occasional shot in is an admirable contribution within a heavy tank fight. Don't be too afraid to use your HP if you feel it's magneted. Pay attention to the distance indicator and the ping. Distance is an important thing to come to grips with for good light tank play. It pays to be aware of the distance indicator that pops up above your reticule when you aim at a tank. This tells you how far away you are from that tank and can be used in conjunction with your own knowledge of concealment lighting to judge if you will be spotted. Another thing that you can do is you can aim at the ground and hit the T key to ping a location. Hover over this marker to see the distance that that location is from you to that exact point. Useful, uh, useful thing to be able to do. Binos are meta below tier 8. Binos are becoming less and less favorable as the meta of the game evolves. However, below tier 8, when you don't actually have to commit one slot to mount a CVS, there's actually a meta set that involves them. You see, the directive of optimal calibration not only adds 2.5% view range to your active optics of view range, but also adds 2.5% view range after your binos have, have activated. So if you want to be really trolly in your Type 64, put binos in the scout slot, as the, uh, they're the only equipment here without a bond or bounty version, Vents, optics, and or optical calibration, this gives you a 15.5% plus to active view range, and with binos active, plus 30% to view range, which is just absolute filth. This setup is prime for tanks like the, e the AMX ELC BIS as well. Adding an additional 2.5% view range after your binos have activated is just... It's silly, but quite fun. Don't use a Kamenet. Kamenets are one of the worst choices that you can make for light tanks. 
A large part of this is because they're not active on the move and so are useless for active scouting. Further to that, their bonus stationary camo does not stack with low noise exhaust, but instead overlights it. For example, if I take this AMX 1390, which as you can see on the light here has 38.58 stationary camo, and I go to mount a camouflage net in addition to my low noise exhaust, you would think it would add 10% camo to my stationary camo, but it doesn't. Instead, what happens is that it goes up to 42. So I've gained, what? 5%, 4% additional camo from my camo net while stationary because it's not stacking with the low noise exhaust, it's instead overlighting it. A camo net is utterly, utterly worthless on a light tank. It really is not worth sacrificing a piece of equipment for that pittance of bonus camo that you're going to get while you're stationary. Instead, use a low noise exhaust on pretty much every tank. The, the camo net is basically completely obsolete as far as light tanks go. Designated target. Designated target is a very good skill allowing you to keep enemies that you spot lit for an additional two seconds. However, many people are unaware of how it actually works. So keep in mind that this skill only activates if you are aimed within 10 degrees of an enemy vehicle when you spot it. This is why when spotting a position, you should keep your turret locked off facing the area that you're spotting in order to make use of this skill. Situational awareness. I allude many times in comedic skits here on the channel to the radio operator being useless. And while this is largely the case, the radio operator skill situational awareness outclasses the commander skill recon by an entire percent, granting an additional 3% view range compared to recon's 2%. So if you ever have a choice between these two, as you will on vehicles where the commander also takes up any deal up skills, you should always, always pick situational awareness before recon. Ladies and gentlemen, that will do for part one of the light tank guide. I was not expecting to have it to split into two parts, but we will pick up with it. Uh, part 2 next week where we'll be covering such things as CVS mechanics and the like. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. If you're interested in learning more, we've got to uh, learn what the tanks playlist. I'll link in the card and in the description. Uh, in addition, let's do another giveaway, shall we? A thousand gold this time. Let's do um, your best beach story. Right. Share your funniest thing to ever happen to you at the beach. Uh, leave a comment with it. The one that makes me chuckle the most, I will award a thousand gold. Just uh, put your the your username and the server that you play on. And I'll pick the winner a couple of days after uh, this video, and I'll add the winner winner's name to a link's comment as well as their story or a pinned comment. So. Thank you very much, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Uh, stay tuned for next week with part two. Bye bye. And just what's good are legendary, brutal stuff. Like he does a thing, and screws it up. But the world of tanks is kindergarten, childish software. Real men play armored warfare, BVE. And his business model is actually insane. Making money off of stuff, but doesn't have to play a game. Also, his leadership skills are dope as fuck. He says, YOLO up for.